Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the world's best investing podcast. I just reviewed NVIDIA's latest earnings report, and there are two main takeaways that basically mean that AI stocks are now positioned to create tremendous, tremendous wealth. We're talking about companies like Palantir, Duolingo, Hims, largely AMD, stuff like that. Jensen Huang is the oracle of AI, much like Warren Buffett is the oracle of Omaha. Jensen has this dashboard level view of everything that's happening in AI right now. Just because NVIDIA is the go-to source of AI compute. Sorry for the camera zooming in and out, but that was kind of cool too. And so he knows exactly what AI workloads are picking up, where AI is adding value, etc. So the two main takeaways from NVIDIA's earnings report is one, inference is going through the roof, which is very, very bullish across the board, just because it means that people are finding useful AI applications. So just six months ago, we had people spending a lot of money on training. And the question was, is all this capital that's being assigned to training actually going to yield a return on investment? I've been covering companies like Amazon and Meta for the past, uh, actually for years now. But over the past six months, I was telling you guys, look, look at these numbers. These guys are making money. The more money they invest in AI. Now, as inference picks up in, in volume, it means that more companies are finding value. For example, he shared some data, Jensen, about Microsoft's, uh, uh, the number of, of tokens that Microsoft was processing. And that's, I believe, if I'm not uh, wrong, that's up, that's up fivefold year over year. So what it means is that AI applications are picking up, which gives continuity to the AI bull market. Secondly, Jensen said that AI agents are particularly capable in enterprise AI. So he basically says that enterprise AI is now ready to take off. Now, when Jensen says something, I take it very seriously for the reasons that I was explaining. And so we've seen how bullish everyone was on Palantir, although actually many people were saying it's time to trim and time to be reasonable, etc. But he's saying that AI agents are highly capable of understanding subtle problems within the enterprise and fixing them in an automatic way. So ultimately saving companies costs and allowing them to increase their revenue. So the combination of these two things essentially means that the singularity scalar thesis that I've been talking about for quite some time now is very much alive. And that's very bullish for stocks like Palantir, Hims, Duolingo, et cetera, and others that actually many of you guys are finding and are sending me in the DMs. Why? Because singularity scalers, I'll just remind you what these are. Essentially, these are companies that stand to most likely exponentiate the earning power and thus free cash flow per share levels by relatively speaking, doing nothing. All they have to do is maintain and enhance their proprietary data mode. So they basically have data that no one else has. And then just by plugging new AI models, as the models get better, they can exponentiate the value they deliver to customers per dollar spent on their behalf. Naturally, what gets them in that position is either the Costco algorithm that I've talked about a lot or the NVIDIA algorithm. These are two operational blueprints that I explain in depth in my course, which are behind this decades and actually the successes that we've seen in modern history in the enterprise period. And so essentially, as Jensen says that the AI workloads are scaling, he says that the scaling of AI workloads are intact, meaning that everything is going up and to the right. He also talks about reasoning workloads. And he says that these require a hundred to a thousand times more compute than single shot inference. Single shot inference is basically when you run the model once and it just produces an output. Reasoning means that the model is producing outputs and then using the outputs to then run more inferences. So it's kind of thinking to itself. And then he talks about this uh, dynamic, which I'm not gonna say whether I agree with him or not because it's irrelevant. This guy is by default right in many things, most of the things he says. He says that AI factories, which everyone is gonna require going forward, including nations, companies, any kind of organization, basically now have workloads which are AI agents working with AI agents. So if an AI agent, when it reasons, requires 100 to 1,000 times more compute than single shot inference, well, that tells you, that gives you an idea of how much more compute you need when you have a bunch of agents talking to themselves. And this is, say, only a few agents. Once everyone has an agent, once every single vertical within a company runs autonomously powered by Palantir, as I explained in my last video, driven by N agents, so more than one, things are going to get really crazy. And so we're going to need exponentially more compute. And just the level of automation that this technology is going to bring is tremendous. 
So regarding Palantir, I was talking in my last video how everyone now thinks it's a good idea to trim. Certainly expensive stock. Duolingo, certainly expensive stock. Hims getting more expensive, although still quite cheap, etc. But as, as the AI scaling laws continue to evolve correctly, these companies are positioned to just make so much more money. The thing with the 2001 internet bubble, I like this effect. This is, this is my computer. This is my screen doing that as I move my hand, I think, but it's interesting. So anyways, it would seem like these companies have an expiry date because it would seem like it's a bubble, et cetera. If you just go back to the free cash flow per share graph for any of these companies and you track that down to fundamentals, you'll see that actually that those curves are just getting started and they've been enhanced in great part by AI. So let me just review that. With Duolingo, CEO Luis Von Ann was talking about in the last earnings call that I covered too, that AI enables them to produce much more high quality engaging content. It enables them to do stuff that previously didn't make sense economically because of the costs. And what's happening with Duolingo is that as AI gets better, the production of engaging content and experiences, features like talking to an AI and practicing a language is getting so much cheaper, so much faster, that fundamentally the company's value creation process can only enhance exponentially, can only improve exponentially from here. The same with Palantir. Palantir has this amazing software and the faster they can deploy it and the more bespoke they can do that, the better it works for you. In turn, as you use that software and AI models get better, you can automate a growing volume of your company's operations. As that runs, you produce more data, which leads to more automation, better models, better outcomes, etc. And with him, it's kind of the same. They have, they're basically treating conditions and as they gather data about what works and what doesn't, well, as the AI models get better, they're just going to get more efficient. So we are at the beginning of this new AI driven economy. And although it would seem like the performance of these stocks has been tremendous for the past few years, I actually think we're just getting started. And this is driven by fundamentals. What happens is that when people talk about bubbles, well, firstly, you have to study bubbles. And so the difference between now and the 2000, uh, the dot-com bubble, although note, I wasn't actually a grown up back then, right? I'm still relatively young. The difference is that businesses today make money and there's no better place to understand that than by studying Meta, uh, Amazon and uh, Microsoft specifically and seeing how they return, how they get returns on their, on their AI investments. So these guys are, assume, I assume are leading the uh, increase in inference workloads and that's because they're making money. They are producing cash flow. It's strengthening their balance sheets. They're reinvesting. And as they reinvest, it's basically this technology is enhancing their earning power considerably. So what I think we see next in the coming, I'd say, two to four quarters is we see an acceleration in free cash flow per share, which I think is going to shock everyone. And uh, we're going to be seeing this certainly in Palantir and Duolingo, which have no physical components. And then with Hims too, although Hims has more of a physical component with the personalized manufacturing, et cetera. So none of this is financial advice. And you guys should do your own research. I always say this, but I just think that this is such a counterintuitive moment in history in which your bi our biological processes are wired to raise these red flags of, hey, these things have gone up too quickly. Uh, things are getting scary. You, I mean, it's like everything within you is programmed to jump ship, right? So it's it's very hard to deal with stocks when they go down, but I've always said it's actually harder to deal with them when they go up fast. So everything is wired to 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 make you jump ship but what i think is that the fundamentals are just getting started we're going to see exponential progress and this whole world about ai agents talking to ai agents i think gets very weird the way value gets produced and captured is different so let me explain that with palantir i was talking about the verticalization of os's uh in my last video i said like you know palantir has warp speed which is a manufacturing os and if i carry on doing the hand thing. I think it's very engaging. It's moving the camera. It's kind of cool. Then if you have warp speed, you can say, well, I want a warp speed for missile manufacturing, or I want a warp speed for cutlery manufacturing. If you happen to have a company like that, so you can verticalize warp speed infinitely in the many verticals of manufacturing, even, uh, even dealing with components across industries, it's just infinite. So there eventually what you get is operating systems for any vertical component in the economy. And the question is, well, who gets the credit for that? If that's running on Palantir, does Palantir get the credit for that? Well, most likely the end customer, the guy that's uh, creating the vertical ontology with his proprietary data, just pays Palantir a subscription 
And then he can resell that ontology to everyone else and have your Cutlery Warp Speed OS um, running as a platform that others can build on. And if you further verticalize the Warp Speed Cutlery OS into a fork Cutlery Warp Speed OS, then you can sell that too. And, and so it's infinitely, fract uh, infinitely fractal. And it's, it's just a question of, I mean, d d does that become a winner-takes-all kind of scenario? Probably. So the first company that creates w whatever vertical ontology and uh, achieves a, a, basically has a data advantage, both in the quality, richness, and in the scale, that person wins and they become a platform. So it's going to get weird. And then obviously, if you have that platform, as the AI models get better, the platform becomes exponentially more powerful because then, I mean, who knows? But maybe maybe in two years' time, we have AIs that can plan, that can, I mean, do all sorts of stuff, right? I mean, right now, these AI agents are capable and we're just getting started. So imagine what we can have in maybe a year or two. And so this verticalization of ontologies then serving as platforms, I think is something that at the extreme just becomes, it becomes highly atomized in that eventually we have a platform for any small component in the economy that's replicable at scale. And basically everyone just races to a winner takes all kind of scenario there. So it gets weird. And then of course, from that level of perspective, if you're analyzing Duolingo and Hims and stuff like that, these are actually vertical ontologies in the making too. So when I say that digital twins are going to be the foundation of capitalism, I'd argue they already are. I really mean that. And basically investing now in the stock market and tech is aligning yourself with the creation of that value stack. Specifically, I mean, it's hard to anticipate when, say, a given component of the compute stack is going to outperform when a company can do truly well. I'm trying to do that with AMD. We'll see if we succeed. But when it comes to networks, it's kind of easier because you see the networks growing in plain sight. And one of the mistakes the market has been doing in the past few years is analyzing networks and just focusing on the income statement as the market did with Spotify, Netflix, Uber, all of these. We've been through these problems many times now together. So you can see these networks growing in plain sight. Uh, you can see it with Hems, actually. If you think about the fact that it's the only customer-centric company in the healthcare space, you can see it with Duolingo, just tremendous, massive growth, ridiculous. You can see it with Palantir in the commercial side. And again, these are just, these are ontologies at different layers of abstraction. So Palantir is foundational. Everything is kind of downstream from that, or if you want to talk about it in terms of abstraction at higher levels of abstraction, etc. So the point is that the fundamentals of the AI revolution are improving really fast. And as AI improves, the performance of AI models is directly accretive to the free cash flow per share levels of these companies. You can, I can get any of these theses wrong uh, individually, but I believe that the overarching thesis of singularity scalers, I think is going to yield tremendous, tremendous returns over the next decade for however long this goes on for until it gets commoditized, which at some point it likely will. All right. So guys, thank you very much for joining me. If you enjoyed this update, could you please share this with one friend? These deep dives are for free. And so the only way this grows is with your help. So thank you very much in advance. Take care and until next time.